And Scalar 454 here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're doing a great pull off with all my locomotives. So stay tuned. Now, all of my locomotives are DCC. And we're going to start with the Atlas Masterline Gold Series Alco S2. Then a BLI SW7 with Paragon 4. Then a slightly bigger switcher in the Rapido GMD1 with sound. Then we have a Walther's GP38-2 that I installed the Digitrax decoder in. Then another Atlas Masterline Gold Series GP40. Then the first of the six axle locomotives, we have an Intermountain SD40-2. Uh, it does not have sound. And then another SD40-2. This one's from Broadway Limited. And again, Paragon 4. And then finally, a Scale Trains Rivet Counter ET44AC Tier 4 Jeevo. Now the first thing we're going to do is put each locomotive on the scale because when it comes to pulling, weight does matter. Start with the Atlas. 62 grams. The SW7. 59 grams. The Rapido GMD1. 74 grams. The Walther's GP38-2, 75 grams. The Atlas GP40, also 75 grams. The Intermountain SD40-2, 82 grams. Remember, this does not have a speaker. The Broadway Limited SD40-2, this one does have a speaker and weighs 86 grams. And then the big scale trains, Tier 4 Jeevo, 111 grams. That is a lot heavier than the rest of them. Of course, we're going to need to know how much our freight is going to weigh. We're going to start with the Rapido GP20. And these are quite heavy at 34 grams. If needed, we'll add on these box cars, which weigh 32 grams. If we have to do any fine tuning to our pull, we will add on these hoppers at 15 grams. A track has been cleaned, so place your bets. Which one is going to pull the best? If you didn't pick the scale trains, you're out of your mind. But the question is, how much will each pull? Let's find out. So our pull test is actually going to be quite a challenge because not only does it go up a 2% hill, but it starts in an 18-inch radius curve where our incline starts right about here. And it goes all the way up, again, 2%. And then we have another 18 inch radius curve in the middle of the hill. And we're not successful until we reach this point right here. We're starting off with a simple five Rapido cars for this little Atlas. It shouldn't really have too much problem pulling it up the hill. This is at speed 15. I will adjust the speed accordingly as needed. We are fully on the hill now but it is trucking away without any issues. Running into a few connection problems coming up the hill, but it's not really having an impact on its pulling abilities. But as expected, it did make it up the hill. Chugging our way up with seven cars now. I didn't think it was going to do it, but it made it up without any problems. We're coming up the hill with eight Rapidos, and it's still pulling pretty good. I think it's actually pulling better than it did when I first got it. Oh! Just as I say that, it stopped. We're cranked up to power 30, a good running start. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. It's going to make it. Success with eight Rapido cars. I've tacked on one of the hoppers. I don't think it's going to get through it, though. Then again, I could be wrong. <laughs> with one more hopper, 
It's slowing down though. It's slowing down bad. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's it. So this little Atlas switcher pulled 287 grams. That's not bad. Better than I expected. Can the Broadway Limited switcher do as well as the Atlas? Well, we've loaded it up with eight Rapido cars and we'll see how it does. Well, I made it through the corner and up the hill so far. It does seem like it's slowing down a bit with eight cars. Ooh, I don't know. That's not going to make it. Oh, well, it's not stopped yet. But this is our trouble spot on the top of the hill here, so... I'm going to make it through that. Nope. We'll give it a little bit more momentum at power 30. Come on. Yes. It still needs to make it around the corner. Oh yeah, I think it's picking up speed again. Yeah, it made it. We got the same load the Atlas made it up with. Will it do it? You can hear the wheels spinning. Oh no, a little bit extra speed, and still nothing, not going to happen. The BLI tops out with 8 Rapidos and 272 grams. Since the two switchers can haul 8 cars, I figured we'd start with that. Power 30 right off the bat, and so far the Rapido GMD1 is climbing up the hill with no issues at all. That is just too easy. How about 10 tank cars? It's a pretty big jump in weight, but so far, it doesn't seem to be phasing the GMD-1. Does seem to be a little bit slower through the corner though, but I think it's gaining traction and I think it's gonna make it. It sure did. Nice job. We're up to 11 tank cars and it is definitely slowing down. We even have a little bit more juice going to it. Giving it a little bit more momentum, but I don't know if it's going to have the traction. Oh man, I think it's going to stop. Yep. We've tacked on a box car, and we're giving it another shot, but as you can see, it's already starting to slow down. Yeah, she's stolen out. A last ditch effort with a hopper. I don't know, it doesn't look good already. Come on, Rapido, get through it. Oh, come on, get through it, get through it, get through it. Yes, yes.
but it's not over yet. It has to make it through the curve. Oh, I think it made it. See it pick up speed there? Fantastic. Tacked on one more car. Surprisingly, it's doing better. I don't know how this is possible, but it is going up here better than it did with just one of those. Look at that. So with two hoppers, it made it. We're back to 10 Rapidos and a box car. And immediately, yeah, it's struggling, but it's moving. It's not too bad. I think it might make this. Come on, come on, come on. Oh no, not happening. 10 tank cars, two hopper cars. This Rapido GMD1 moves into first place with 370 grams, a huge increase over the other two. The first of the GPs, the Walder GP38-2. We're sticking with 10 tank cars. We'll see how it goes. So far, so good, though. Heck yeah, that's not bad. Well, that was too easy, so we'll move on to more repeatos. We're up to 11 tank cars. It's moving okay, but it's definitely slowing down a little bit. But it has for sure enough momentum to get through this spot. There it goes. I figure it should make it around the corner as well. Here's our hard spot and it should pick up speed. There it goes. We're gonna be okay. The GP38-2 has taken the lead. Does it have enough cojones to do 12 tank cars? Oh, I don't know about that. It's spinning. Definitely spinning. But there's still enough traction that it's still going. <laughs> oh no, that's it. I tacked on a box car instead. If it makes it up, then we know this is as good as it gets, but it's slowed down already, so nope. This locomotive's sounding a little angry on the way down. I might have made it unhappy. Replace the boxcar with the hopper. If it makes it, we're done. If it doesn't, we're done. It's not gonna happen, that's it. The Walther's GP38-2 pulls 11 tank cars and just edges out the Rapido GMD-1 with 374 grams. On to the Atlas GP40. I do expect it to at least match the Walther's, which is why we're starting right with 11 tank cars. I think it should be okay. Ooh. It made it with a little bit of a trouble, but it did make it. Okay, not bad. We're now trying 12 tank cars. It's slowing down a bit, but I think it's gonna make it. Ooh, yes. Yes, it will. We'll make it through the corner. Yep, we're good. It will pull all 12 of my Procore tank cars. That's awesome. I tacked on the little hopper. I'm not expecting it to make it, but we'll see. You can see it's slowing down already, but it is moving okay. Ooh, boy. Oh my. 
my gosh, it still made it. Look at that. Yeah. Oh no, but is it going to stop at the corner? No, it's going to make it. It will make it. That's fantastic. The little atlas keeps on going. I can't imagine it making it through with two hoppers on it, but we will see. Oh, it's already slowing down. It's not bad though. Oh dear. Oh man, oh man. Oh no, oh, it's still going, it's still going. Yes. This thing is a trooper. You can hear it spinning. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh my God, it's still going. I don't believe it. I knew this one was a puller, but man, it is impressing me. I threw on the box car, which gives it a couple of more grams, but a little bit less rolling resistance. We'll see if that makes any difference. Yep, it does. We're done. The Atlas GP40 pulled all 12 Rapido tank cars and is the first one to get over 400 grams at 438 grams. I knew this was a puller, but man, that is impressive. The Intermountain SD40-2 is our first six axle locomotive. It's about 10 grams heavier than the Atlas, so it should be able to pull more. But, as you can already see, it looks like it's struggling just a bit. Now, I mentioned this doesn't have sound. Oh no, already? I mean, it's kind of going, but there's no way this is gonna make it. No, nope, it's not. I didn't think it would be able to pull all 12, so we have 11 plus the box car. And you can already hear this thing just screaming and squealing and spinning the tires. Oh, I didn't make it. I tried with a box car, now with a hopper, and even with that, it's not gonna make it. No, there's no way. Trying with a little bit slower speed, maybe I can get a little bit more traction. It seems to be moving a little bit more, but... Ooh. So momentum is not the friend of the Intermountain. But still not good enough. Now with just 11 Rapido tank cars, we need to get a result out of this one. Come on, SD40. I'm at power 20 in hopes that I stop spinning the wheels, but I think I can hear it already. Yeah, it's spinning. Oh, man. I'm hoping this is the last run I have going up there. Ten tank cars, one hopper. <laughs> it's not looking good, though, is it? Oh man, come on. We're down to 10. 10 tank cars. We got good momentum. It's slowing down just a little bit, but it is carrying some speed. <laughs> it's already slowing down, come on. You gotta make it through this. Hey! Finally! Not quite out of the woods yet, but I think it's going to finally get a pull. One successful run, 10 tank cars. That's all it's going to be for the Intermountain SD40-2. Bit disappointing to be honest. It's the BLI's turn, SD40-2. Running the same 10 tank cars. This is currently power 25, and I'm expecting it to climb without issue, which it is.
As expected, that was pretty easy. We now loaded with all 12 Rapido tank cars. We're up to power 30. Can this BLI pull up the hill? It is slowing down a bit. Definitely slowing down. Ooh. I don't think, I don't think so. Nope, it's spinning. Not happening. We'll try to give this a little bit more power and see if that helps. It's climbing pretty good right now. Will it make it through this little trouble spot? I don't think so. Negative. We're down to 11 tank cars. It should be able to get through with this. At least I hope so. Oh man. Barely. It barely made it. Still struggling through the corner a little bit, but it is going to make it through. The final attempt, we have one CN car tacked on. It's actually going pretty good at the moment. There we go. It made it. Yeah, I just needed a, a bunch more power. Ooh, but it is slipping a bit there. <laughs> a little extra speed, and we make it through. Two hoppers, 11 tank cars, power 40. Can it make it up? Far so good, but will it lose traction? Ugh. Yeah, it's done. So the BLI SD40 also has a little bit of struggles up the hill. It did do 11 tank cars and one hopper for 389 grams, but for a six axle locomotive that is the heaviest so far, I kind of expected a little bit better. Well, the moment we've been waiting for, the Scale Trains Tier 4 Jeevo. We're at power 20, pretty relaxed. All 12 Rapido tank cars. And I'm expecting a lot from this big boy. Oh man, look at that. It already had a bit of a slowdown. Nevertheless, it does make it up with 12 tank cars. With one box car added on, we're not messing around. We got a little bit more speed. Actually, quite a bit more speed. A little bit of a slowdown there, though. Ooh, well, it's not going to make it? I don't believe it. We'll replace the box car with two hoppers and we'll see how this goes. We got the same power. Will it do any better? By the looks of it, the answer is going to be a little bit. But yes, it does. It is going to make it. You can still hear the wheels spinning though. So the scale trains ties with the lead. Three hoppers, we're climbing at power 35, giving it a good chance. I think we got good speed going up now. Oh, that's better, that's better. So the scale trains takes the lead. We're up to four hoppers. Can this Scale trains make it up. We got good speed, 35 power setting. Yep, we're good. I'm liking it. 
Starting to become a darn big train up here. Wow! I've replaced the four hoppers with two box cars, which does add a little bit of weight, four more grams, but I do think these have a little bit more rolling resistance, so I think this is going to be a struggle for this locomotive. It's so far moving pretty good, though. Oh, no. Oh, it did make it! Yeah! Not out of the woods just yet, but I think we're going to be okay. Yep. We've added one hopper. It always looks like it's doing well until we get right here. But it made it. It actually seems like it made it better. I almost wonder if now that this locomotive is warmed up that it's performing better than when I started. We've tacked on another hopper. It's going up strong up until this point right here. Not sure it's going to have the traction to make it through though. Nope, it's all she wrote. So the scale trains does 12 tank cars, two box cars, and a hopper. For a total of 487 grams, that's over a pound of pulling up a 2% grade. Not too shabby. Unsurprisingly, the scale trains takes the victory, but maybe by not as much as I thought. It weighs 48% more than the GP40, but it only pulled 11% more, which makes this Atlas by far the most impressive locomotive our test. The BLI SD40 comes third, but I expected a little bit more from it. For some reason, the six axle heavier locomotives just didn't seem to make much of a difference. Maybe that's just my layout, I'm not so sure. Even the Walther's four axle GP38 performed really well, coming in fourth at uh, 374 grams. Another standout was the Rapido GMD1. For a switching machine, it pulled really, really well. This thing is a tank, so very impressed by that. I would have to say the biggest disappointment is the Intermountain SD40-2. Considering the SD40s were mainline locomotives, this thing, I would have thought, should pull more. So to only get 340 grams, I'm a bit sad by that. In last place, we have our switchers, which I'm not surprised by. I'm not disappointed by that at all. I think they both performed very well. Um, they're switching machines. You can't expect them to be doing mainline hill climbs all the time. They're just to move cars around the yard and whatnot. So I think they both pulled very, very well for what they are. During the test, I focused heavily on the weight of our freight, which does make a big difference, but I feel I need to mention rolling resistance. I mentioned earlier that these box cars seem to have more rolling resistance than the hoppers, and that can make a big difference. If you have some gunk or some hair or something between the wheels and your trucks, that can be like putting on the brakes to your train, so keep that in mind. Now if you are wondering how much each of these locomotives can pull on a flat surface, well I don't have enough track or freight cars to test this properly, so I hooked up the worst puller, the BLI SW7, we attached it to the maximum load that the scale trains was able to pull, that's 487 grams, which is 200 grams more than what this little train was able to pull up a hill. We're going to start with speed setting one. It moves it, no problem. That is speed setting five. So that just shows you how much of a difference flat track can make compared to a hill. Uh, this little switcher can definitely do it. I'm actually pushing more cars now. <laughs> We've got uh, an extra three hoppers onto it. And it's still going okay, but things like switches, curves, all of that makes a difference. Oh, look at that. It stopped because we're going through a couple of switches. So the little SW7 was pushing 532 grams, but... As the freight cars got through all the switches and whatnot, 
it eventually snagged and stalled out. But it just goes to show you how much of a difference flat track makes. So I would say I would expect at least 50% more pulling uh, capability on a flat track with every one of these locomotives um, based off the numbers that we've already found today. And with that, I think that's going to conclude this video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe for more videos, and as always, thanks for watching.